Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to attempt to paint this water reflection on a lily pond and I'm going to start by masking off the sides of my paper. I'm using a washi tape but you can also use masking tape as well. I already have a rough composition in my head which is a combination of two pictures. I really like how the water reflection looks in the first image and for the second one I really like the blue flowers at the bottom. So I'm just going to combine these two elements but create my own composition with the water reflection that I had in mind. I'm going to keep the outline nice and simple. I'm just drawing out a lot of small circles to space out the elements here in the foreground. I'm drawing the clumps of flowers and I just try to make sure that the edges of the bush look natural by playing with the position of the heights and how they overlap each other. Then for the lily pads, I try to incorporate a little bit of perspective by making the round lily pads a bit more oval as I paint towards the top of my paper. I also want to play with the spacing like how some are overlapping each other and also the different sizes. Because I want to include a large space for the water reflection, I want to make sure I leave enough space which I did at the bottom. Then here I just erase some of the extra lines for the overlapping lilies so it's easier for me to paint later on. The smaller ovals that I'm drawing right now are for the flowers and to differentiate these I want to draw the leaves surrounding the flowers or the sepals so it's much easier for me to paint later on since I know how to differentiate between the lily pads and the flowers. Lastly, to frame the painting a bit better, I'm going to draw some random rocks on the left and the right corner. For the slits of the lily pads, I kind of drew out a dot at the center of all the lily pads. Then I follow this up with a very small acute angle facing in different directions to make the placement look more natural. And this way the slits can all face the center. That's it for the outline, it'll also be available in my coffee shop. Next, here are the colors I'm going to be using. This is Sepia by Holbein, Grey of Grey by Holbein, Ultramarine Finest by Schminke, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, Crimson Lake by Holbein, Burnt Umber by Holbein, Sean Brilliant Dark by Schminke, Terra Verde by Holbein, Paints Grey Bluish by Schminke, and Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith. I'm also going to use my Bleed Proof White by Dr. PH Martins. I'm going to start by allocating the different colors for all of the elements and I'm starting here with the rocks. The color here is a little bit unclear. I tried to make something that is more brown and neutral but it also has different hues as well to bring about a bit more interest and suggest different light reflections. I'm using a light consistency here starting with Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Fineness and a bit of Crimson Lake to make a purple light brown. I use this color only for the corners of the stones or the rocks. Then I continued it with a bit of Yellow Ochre and Hansi Yellow. This is all painted in a really light consistency so it gives me more space to add on more layers and detail later on without it looking too overworked. I'm also going to do the same thing for the rocks on the right hand side. Next I'm going to paint the base color for the blue flowers. For this I used a mixture of ultramarine finest and grey of grey. Starting with a light consistency, I'm painting dots in different directions. Then while the surface is still damp, I painted the corner at the bottom using the same mix but with a bit more ultramarine finest so there will be a soft gradient going from the light to the slightly darker blue. It's okay to leave out some white negative space here and there you don't need to fill in everything because the white negative space will add a little bit of airiness so it doesn't look too dense and heavy. I find that the best way to do this is to paint a few flowers at a time before adding on the darker blue. This way the paint has a bit more time to settle rather than working on a surface that's a bit too wet. 
I also want to incorporate different flowers with different colors for the bush and the mixture that I'm going to use is Crimson Lake and Ultramarine Finest with a bit of Jean Brilliant Dark to lighten the color slightly. But with these colors, I'm just going to play with the ratio. So I'm going to increase the amount of Crimson Lake if I want to make this deep red flower. And I will just add more Ultramarine Finest if I want to turn the color into more of a purple. I also switched to a small filbert brush to make it easier to paint the round petals. Next I'm going to fill in the rest of the bush with the greeneries and for this I'm using a mix of Terra Verde with Paints Grey Bluish and I'm going to first use a light consistency and at times I like to switch it up with a slightly thicker consistency and more Paints Grey Bluish for a darker value. And I'm just going to let the color mingle with each other so some areas are slightly darker and it looks a bit deeper whereas others look lighter which means they're slightly higher up and getting a bit of reflection from the sun. While the surface is still damp, you can always add on more of the darker values if you would like in a slightly thicker consistency. This way you have a bit more control rather than doing it all at once together. I want the edges of the bush to be much lighter so I just use Terra Verde by itself and I also made grass textures so it looks more fine and delicate. Next I'm going to paint the lily flowers. I want there to be two colors which are the pink flowers and white flowers. For this pink I used a mix of Crimson Lake with Jean Brilliant Dark so it turns into this light pastel pink but I still tried to use a fairly light to medium consistency. And I tried to paint on the petals around the outer area. If I accidentally paint it too dark you can always take the excess off using a bit of tissue. As for the center, I like to use this deep yellow color and this is from a mix of Hansa Yellow Medium with a tiny bit of Crimson Lake. Once the base color is completely dry, I'm going to try to redefine the petals. And for this I used the same pink mixture but it has a bit more Crimson Lake for a slightly darker value. But I'm still working with a fairly light consistency because I don't want there to be too much contrast with the base color. And since I'm going to work on this and layer on a little bit more petals towards the end of this painting, I'm just focusing more on a single layer of the petals for now. As for the white flowers, I'm going to color it using Jean Brilliant Dark in a very light consistency instead of leaving it completely white. And for the center, I used a thick consistency of that yellow mixture. Then I'm going to leave those petals to dry for now and paint on the sepals. For this, I used the same green that I already pre-mixed on my palette with added Hansa Yellow Medium. After painting on the sepals, I'm going to add the details for the petals. This is of course painted very lightly. I used John Brilliant Dark and I added a touch of the color from the center, which is from a mix of Hans Yellow Medium with a touch of Crimson Lake. Now moving on to the lily pads, I like to vary the green. I just used a mixture of Terra Verde, Hansa Yellow Medium, and Paints Grey Bluish for a darker green. I just tried to vary the color mixture and the ratio as I'm painting these. So some areas of the lily pads are lighter than others, some are a bit more yellow and some are a bit more blue. This is completely up to you. I like to imagine where the light is coming from and some areas where the lily pads are a bit more yellow, I try to imagine that there's a bit more light casting in that area. And as I was painting this, I realized that you don't actually need to leave space for the slice for now because sometimes it can be a bit distracting because you're trying to focus painting on the ovals according to the perspective. And since we're going to be layering on more color and the color of the water will be darker than the lily pads anyway, we can actually just paint the slits using the color of the darker water later on. As I'm applying the paint though, something that I like to do at times is to direct the lines according to the center of each of the lily pads. And this way, even though the tones of green are a little bit randomized, it still follows the structure of these leaves. 
By the way, for the base of these lily pads, I'm painting in a medium to light consistency. So when it dries later, it will be fairly light. This way I can still adjust the tone and the placement of the values later on. After painting a few, I can start to see which ones have completely dried because the color has faded and for some of them, I decided to glaze on a bit of the yellow green from a mix of Hansi Yellow Medium with a bit of Terra Verde and you can see that this just brightens the color ever so slightly. I also decided to add a couple more small lily pads to fill in some awkward spaces. Next, I'm going to work on the base color of the water. For this, I'm using a mix of ultramarine fineness with paints gray bluish, and I'm working in a light to medium consistency for now. And I also like to work in sections because it's preferable to work on a slightly damp surface. I want to add a reflection of a tree in this area since there's a large space for the water and for this I used the light yellow green and I also added some yellow ochre to make the green look more earthy and on the left I continued it with just sepia as well as a mixture of sepia and paints gray bluish. I like to alternate the colors at this point but I'm also thinking about the area of the reflection and what is actually reflecting on the water. Since this is the base color there's still room to fix things along the way so you don't have to care too much to make sure that things are positioned in the exact same area. In fact, I like to enlarge the lighter area of the tree. This way I can always layer it using the darker color later on. At the top, I also want to add a little bit more of the tree reflection and also a bit of reflection from the rocks as well. As for whatever surrounding the trees or the other reflections, I'm going to use ultramarine fineness as well as the mixture of paints gray bluish and a bit of sepia. This will be the blue reflection which is mostly from the sky. As I'm finishing up the base color, you can see that when the colors settle, everything looks kind of faded and light. So now I'm going to start to work on the form and the darker values on the second layer. I'm starting with the rocks by using a mix of paints gray bluish and sepia to paint the shadows for the top face. And for the rocks on the right, I use a mix of burnt umber and yellow ochre. Now going back again to the rocks on the left, I added the darker value to separate each structure and again this is from a mix of paints gray bluish and a bit of sepia. I like to use almost a dry brush load so there are some added texture from the bristles of my brush. After this once the water is completely dry I'm going to add on the second layer. Here I'm using a mix of paints gray bluish with sepia to create this really dark tone almost like a black but since I'm spreading it out it will become lighter so while the surface is still a little bit damp I like to add on a thicker consistency so some areas are a little bit darker and this will actually be part of the reflection. For this part of the painting I try to rely on this reference image quite a bit because the form of the reflections are fairly clear, so I tried to depict something similar to it. For the rocks, I just added a thicker consistency of burnt umber and yellow ochre. Then along the sides, I made the edges kind of blurry using the paints gray bluish and sepia. And on the left, I want to add some reflections and color variations, again using the darkest color mixture on the left side and also a bit of that earthy tone from the burnt umber. I also want to lightly depict some leaf textures from the reflection and for this I use the paints gray bluish mix but in a light consistency and I like to pair this up with a thicker consistency for more of the denser trees on the left. Try to not do too much of this, this is just mere suggestions 
and for certain areas I want to create movement from the water and I don't want to lose the lighter blue color from the base. I'm trying to create ripple textures by creating curved lines and because the reflections are uneven you can do this with a lighter consistency and a thicker consistency as well for that variation. When you're painting on the curved lines make sure that most of the ripples follow the same direction so it doesn't become too overcrowded and busy. The ripples are something that I added to give more movement to the water but of course it's optional I just find that it helps depict the form of the water a bit more. I'm going to leave the second layer for now so I don't overwork it at this point. I'm going to wait for it to dry and meanwhile I'm going to enhance the form of the lily pads. I want to bring about a bit more saturation to these lily pads and also a bit more texture by adding more lines facing the center. Another thing that I also like to do at this point is to redefine the leaves which are overlapped on top of each other by outlining them slightly with a darker value. As I was painting the leaves, I kind of felt like it was missing something. I think that the colors were a little bit too boring and repetitive, so I decided to incorporate another hue which is the pink from Crimson Lake and a bit of Jean Brilliant. I actually like to play with the ratio as well, so some of the leaves have a slight glaze of the pink and some has more of a darker red. Personally, I like placing the pink more around the edges. This is something that I'm only going to glaze lightly and I like it paired up with some Hansi Yellow as well because it just brightens the overall lily pad and I just find that this small change makes a huge difference to the final outcome. I'm also going to use the light consistency of the pink to glaze the center of the sepals. Now onto the really fun part which is to bring everything together by adding the darkest value from sepia and paints grey bluish in a very thick consistency. And this can be a bit more randomized where you place it depending on which area you imagine to have reflective area from the sky and which area will be covered by some trees. For a little bit of inspiration, I like to use the reference image, but I'm not going to follow it to a T since the position of my lily pads are fairly different anyway. I want the focal point to be closer to the bottom, so I'm going to darken the top area mostly and have the reflective area near the flowers. To paint the leaves and the reflection of the tree, it's better to do this on a damp surface because I find that some of the harsher edges makes it not look like water reflection because they're a bit too defined. So for some areas, I like to dampen the surface randomly. Then like in this area, you can see that my paint is slightly dispersing outwards without it traveling too fast. As it dries, the edges are going to start becoming a bit more blurry and this paired with the texture of the water moving or the ripples will create a really convincing water texture. Don't forget to also add shadows underneath the lily pads. This will help suggest that the lily pads are sitting on top of the water instead of the shapes merging together with the water. For the shadow at the bottom here, I like to paint on a completely dry surface because I want the ripples to have more definition in this area. But again, be very careful and not overdo this. It's better to add on the textures along the edges where the base color is darker so you can smudge it in case you make a mistake. But I'm going to limit the amount of texture I paint on the lighter base and I like to also pair it using a slightly thinner consistency as well. I'm almost done with the reflection but I do want to adjust the saturation of the tree reflection at the bottom. I felt like the color was a bit too vibrant so to tone it down I used the thick consistency of yellow ochre and paired it with 
the dark paints gray bluish mixture. I'm just going to add on tiny little dots as the texture of the tree and since I am painting this on a damp surface after placing a yellow ochre, those two colors will just mingle and blur out ever so slightly. I did something similar for the top part as well but I felt like the yellow ochre was a bit too light so I also mixed it with Crimson Lake on top before adding the almost black mixture from Paints Grey and Sepia. Now we're ready to add some final touches using Bleed Proof White. I'm going to add the front petals of the flowers. For the yellow flowers or the white flowers, I use a mix of Bleed Proof White with a bit of Jean Brilliant Dark. Then I'm going to use a bit of the color for the center to separate those petals. I'm also going to do the same thing for the pink flowers, but this time I mix Crimson Lake with Bleed Proof White. And this time to separate the petals, I use a mixture of Crimson Lake and John Brilliant Dark in a slightly thicker consistency than the light petals. As for the foreground, I'm going to apply the same technique. So I'm mixing Bleed Proof White with a bit of Ultramarine Finest. I want to create something similar to the lightest part of the flower. And I'm going to add on the flower at the edge of the darkest blue so there is a bit more texture instead of a smooth gradation. I'm starting to like the texture but I felt like the flowers are a bit too light so I decided to add more shadows along the edges with more ultramarine finest but this time I mix it with grey of grey instead of the bleed proof white so it still has a bit more transparency. I also want to clean out the edges of the actual flowers so I'm painting on 4 to 5 petal flowers individually here. This time I'm using the lightest color mixture. This still has a bit of ultramarine but as you can see it's still a little bit lighter compared to the mid-tone that we used earlier. I also decided to add extra flowers along the edges and this will make the flowers look a bit more delicate instead of it just piling on top of each other as a giant bush. Now I'm going to add the darker value for the leaves as well. This is from a mix of paints grey, bluish, and terra verde in a thick consistency. I'm painting on random textures. I also switch to my round brush again so the edges or the tip of the leaves are a bit sharper than the flower petals. Just like the flowers, I also want to clean out the edges of the leaves and for this I use the thick consistency of terra verde. I felt like the rocks on the left were a bit too large and it took away the focal point so I decided to darken the edges. Lastly, I'm going to add some water highlights underneath the lily pads and the flowers and this again will help it look like it's sitting on top of the water. When I was doing this though, I realized that the consistency is a bit too thick so the white kind of makes it a bit too dimensional. What you want to do is to use a lighter consistency with a value that somewhat matches the lightest area of the water, which will be the reflective area of the sky on the bottom right corner. I'm also going to add highlights around the rocks to make them interact with the water instead of them looking like it's just some random object on top. Since there's a lot of black at the top, I decided to add a little bit more ripples using the Bleed Proof White. This time I used a slightly lighter consistency and I hope you also realized that I switched to my liner brush here to make it much easier to control those really thin lines. After this, I felt like I was done so I'm going to unmask everything but like usual, I realized that I need to still fix something. This time, when I looked at the painting again, I felt like the blue of the flowers were a bit too strong, but I want the focal point to still be the reflection on the water, so I decided to mute down the color of the flower slightly by using a really thin consistency of that grey mixture from Sepia and Paints Grey Bluish. This is a very light consistency that I applied for the mid-tone, and I'm going to add this mixture with a bit of Ultramarine Finest for the shadow at the bottom as well. You can see that the color is now a little bit more subtle compared to what it was before. And that's it for this painting. If you enjoyed this one, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Like usual, the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you guys are still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye!